welcome to Let's Be Perfectly Queer. This is the inaugural episode of a brand new show. Um, you're probably tuning in expecting to see with Jerry, um, and you're going to be partially correct uh, this evening. Uh, Jerry is indeed one of my guests on, uh, on this inaugural show, um, but going forward, um, this new show, Let's Be Perfectly Queer, is a show for, by, and about the queer community in Simcoe, Muskoka. Um, I'll be reaching out to folks across the county to get ideas for, uh, for stories, for folks you want to see on the show, for events you want covered, um, for a segment that we're going to have uh, on most episodes called um, Asking for a Friend, where we'll have uh, folks asking questions for a friend. Uh, so that should be a lot of fun. So um, I'm hoping that you all stick with me for this, uh, this ride, and uh, we're going to kick it off right now with someone who has taken all of us on a ride for a little over nine years now, starting with um, Man Talk and Man Time, Man Time, yes, um, which morphed into With Jerry, which you can see now we have uh, on the screen without Jerry, which <laughs> we're a little sad about, oh, yeah. but I want to welcome uh, my, my good friend Jerry Croteau to the show. Thank welcome, you for inviting Jerry. me. Good. Yeah, this is a surprise. Yeah, we've got uh, a few of uh, your former guests here as well. Mm. So uh, to my right, Morgan Sheridan has joined us. Yep. Uh, to your left and my left, Chris Hart. And across from us, we have uh, Dale Boyle and Ali Tucky joining us as well. So wow. all of these individuals, mm. including myself, yes. are former guests <coughs> of uh, With Jerry. So I want to start, first of all, with what got you involved in doing a show for the 2SLGBT community back nine plus years ago? Um, I knew um, former um, employees of Rogers that were here. Uh, um, Sydney McDonald, I think, was a, a, the manager at Rogers. And I lobbied, you know, and I said, how do we get a show that's, because at the time I thought Rogers will never go for an LGBTQ show. They're right. just not gonna do it, it's too conservative. But, so we pitched a show that was more about <clears throat> A little bit of LGBTQ in it, but more, more centered around, um, you know, the arts, um, what some uh, architects are doing, interior designers, that kind of thing. And then finally, uh, the new management team that came in said, "Man, times had it. Like it's done. We need a new angle." And so then we went, and 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 the um, current uh, supervisor here, uh, Kevin Kelly, said, "Let's do something that's completely, you know, LGBT. Let's just do it." And uh, I said, okay. So then it morphed into with Jerry. Oh, I mean, without Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> but it was important because it helped bring awareness to the community of what we were doing. Plus it helped, I worked at the Gilbert Center and it helped promote some of what the programming that was, that was being done there. And then I was able to bring guests that were much more in tune to what was happening within the LGBT community, like right. professionals in practice and Chris Hart, what he does in real estate and Ali with working with, um, with youth and Dale working with Safer Spaces, highlighted a lot of what we were doing anyway in the community. And so, but it's, it's not easy getting guests to come on and be perfectly queer. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can certainly relate to that. Yeah. And Man Talk began when? When did you start here at Rogers? Um, almost 10 years ago. Wow. And it was live television. So that, and it, the studio was. Yes, we are not live right now. It, it was live television, and so there was no time to um, make mistakes right. and, and use foul language was, you know, and then you'd have guests coming on. I had one guest that came on and he was completely high and, you know, F this and my sister's stupid and all stuff like this and, and I'm hearing this, they can't say that, you know. Like. But Morgan's already apologized for that. Yeah. So. <laughs> I'm right here, I'm sitting right here. Yeah. But there was, you know, and, and then you talk about that and, and we all know because we, we've all been guests on shows and I had, did have a drag queen on, Tim Lauren who came in authentic drag with army boots and the dress. It drag originally was dresses that you made yourself and high makeup right. and he had a wig and behind the seat was a, was a, f f um, a plant, not a plant, but a straw, like straws sticking out, like hmm. uh, fake, fake trees and something okay. like this. And his blonde wig got stuck <laughs> in, in the thing and every time he moved, the plant moved like this. 
<laughs> it's like television. And I'm going, oh, and he's moving, and the plant moves with him. It was just hilarious. <laughs> uh, you know, things like that, it's live television, right. so it's your, you can't, you know, stop. And <laughs> so inquiring minds want to know, after almost 10 years of, of doing this show, why, why make the decision to, to stop doing the show? Well, the show, the show was an hour, right? Plus, it was every week. And you have to come up with a guest every week. Mm -hmm. And it's not easy finding guests that are willing. Lots of, lots of individuals, I mean, you, you four came, you five came on, but um, it's, eventually you run out of people. Yeah. <laughs> you know, eventually you yeah. run out of people. Because even though you might know people in the community who are like, uh, who have businesses in town, hairdressing salons, who have our architects, who work in high tech, but they don't always want to come on sure. and talk about who they are and what they're, what they're about. So that and the fact that, you know, it's, it's time. It was time for a new, <laughs> younger <laughs> guy to take over. I'm not sure what I'm doing here then, but <laughs> before I got kicked out. <laughs> but one thing you did say to me when you made the decision to leave was that you wanted to make sure in leaving that you left a spot for yep. the same type of programming. So 2SLGBTQ representation on Rogers within our community, and why is that important? Well, Rogers has long been a supporter of our organization. When it was the AIDS Committee of Simcoe County, they supported us. We, uh, you know, so there's been a long history and a partnership with Rogers and their, and their community television. So naturally, they wanted to, to uh, have representation from the community. And it was important that this, this type of show remains viable because uh, you hate to lose it. You know, right. it, it's, a, it's an opportunity to keep uh, the community alive in a much different way because, you know, as we all know, we've tried to open up gay bars in town and that didn't seem to go over too well. And, and so the community seems to get lost in its uh, ability to have much more visible. Oh, yeah, there's pride, but that's once a year. Yeah. You yeah, know. you're right. So to have that, that weekly platform where folks can go to and, and get that information and hear about events and, and other things going and on in the yeah, community. And I think it's all part of, of Roger's overall inclusivity and diversity in their programming. This fits into that uh, mandate of theirs, I right. believe. And so it's important to keep it going. So I'm congratulations for wanting to do it because it's not for everybody. Well, I thank you for the opportunity, and I don't plan on wasting it, so that's great. I want to hear from uh, yeah. some of our other guests and hear about some stories and experiences of your time on With Jerry, and let's start with Allie. Oh, no. What, what was your first... <laughs> when you were recently on With yeah. Jerry just this past season, I think. And yeah, so I was on twice, one to highlight the youth programs uh, that are running out of the Gilbert Center, and one to highlight the intergenerational programming that is being run out of the Gilbert Center. So yeah, both times were, were a lot of fun. Um, I think that that part of what was so great to be on the show and to be on the show again was just the atmosphere around it. It was very much so just conversational. It was easy. We were laughing at times, talking like cameras weren't on. <laughs> 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 There'll be none of that tonight. Ah, okay. <laughs> Professional. <laughs> Yeah, and so it was just a very easy atmosphere and, and created a really good platform to talk about things that normally wouldn't necessarily be, be talked about so openly. We talked about the prison industrial complex and we talked about crises that are facing youth and especially within those intergenerational pieces, we highlighted what senior LGBTQ folks can learn from younger folks and vice versa and those are conversations that aren't necessarily always readily happening. Mm -hmm. So I find that it was a really, really groundbreaking experience for me and hopefully for folks that um, witnessed the show to just see that conversation in the forefront. That's great. That's great. And, and Ali was actually one of the, uh, the folks that was instrumental in helping me decide on, on a name for the new show. Mm -hmm. um, and it was Ali who, uh, who has come up with the, the segment uh, Asking for a Friend that we're going to feature on, uh, on a lot of the episodes as well. So thank you for that and for your input and, and your continued input into story ideas and suggestions on what we should be doing Always. as part of the new show. I'm excited for that. Yeah, Ask me too. For a me too. Yeah. And I'm, is I'm it like a fairly dialogue? certain Ali is going to be my, uh, my first yeah. segment I'm that I'm going to so take for that. For yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be interesting. Too. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So let's move on to you, Dale, um, mm. and your experiences on, on With Jerry. My 
first time being on the show, and Jerry, you might have to remind me, it was about seven or eight years ago. Mm. I was a student at Georgian College, and I didn't know what to wear, I didn't know what to say, I'd never been in front of a camera, and more importantly, I didn't know it was taped live. And so Jerry started the show, said we are live from man time, and you could see the fear and the worry <laughs> just come right on my face, and it was, and it was, a, it was a terrifying moment. Uh, since then, I had been on the show a number of times to promote the work of the Gilbert Center and the work doing uh, in the community, but I'll just, I'll never forget that first time where uh, I found out it was live while being on the show. That was, uh, that was an interesting moment, mm -hmm. but I've loved it ever since. Yeah. I've really appreciated being on the show, having conversations with you, uh, sharing the programs that we're doing in our community, and the work that uh, our LGBTQ community can benefit from and can get engaged to by being on the show. The fact that it's continuing with Let's Be Perfectly Queer, I think it's just fantastic and something that's needed in the community. So had it not been you, uh, I would be worried with uh, what else would take that segment in that time, because I think mm -hmm. something needs to continue with that. So thank you. <laughs> for both of you for doing this work for so long and hopefully uh, 10 years with yourself in the future. We'll see if I make it 10 <laughs> minutes. But, <laughs> <laughs> but thank you for that. And, and Chris, you've, uh, you've obviously been on uh, with Jerry as well. well and you know, in 10 years, one time. <laughs> <laughs> but you, you so had kids. Right? Yeah. Yeah. You got married, had kids. <laughs> you got married and had kids. No. And I appreciated the opportunity. I actually, um, uh, my appearance on your show was in conjunction with my um, my membership with Professionals in Practice that Morgan started. Um, so representation for the um, LGBTQ uh, business community. And uh, so we came on and we were supposed to be talking about the organization. I think we kind of veered off into family. A lot of family mm -hmm. talk about yeah. the kids. We did. Yeah. But, but I mean, that's part of it, though. Yeah. So was that the one that Lagaya was on, too? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 That was a good segment. Yeah. 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 It was a good segment. Yeah. So, I mean, I think I think I watch your show every week, and I, I think what you've done for the community over the last 10 years and the work that you're doing at the Gilbert Center is is amazing. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I just want to let you know that, that I appreciate that, and I, oh. um, and I know that, that many others do. So, oh. And you're a great guy. <laughs> oh, sweet guy. that's good. 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 Sweet guy. There we go. We got the <laughs> tears going. All right. We want to see that. Where's the Kleenex? <laughs> Mission accomplished. <to complex. laughs> Where's the Kleenex? <laughs> Speaking of tears and Kleenex, Morgan. <laughs> I know, I know. Great segue. I Thank know, you, I know. Well, I mean, <laughs> let's, let's hear about uh, your... Yeah. Oh. Well, Jerry, Jerry, Jerry and I go way back. I we, mean, yeah. way back. I was a uh, co-op student uh, with you uh, right when it was the AIDS committee of uh, the ACSC, and, and I think you were just the new executive director, you know, at that point. That's when 15, when 16 years ago. Yeah, and I was only a toddler. When, uh, when when I came into <laughs> work, yeah, you know, I think you were a teenager. Were you, were you <laughs> yeah, I was. I was. I was very, very young. <laughs> but uh, but uh, so we've we've gone we've gone back. Um, but I, I've always appreciated being on your show, and I think. Uh, again, to echo what uh, you know, the other guests have said too, you have done tremendous work for the community. Mm. And I think that very similar to professionals in practice, the more that we uh, have individuals uh, get in front of people that are LGBTQ in the community, the more normalized it becomes. Um, and I think you've done tremendous work and you should be, you should be commended for that. Thank but I actually you. have a couple questions for my, myself. So now that the, you've, you've, uh, <laughs> you've got all of this time, this free time, what are you going to do with it all? Free time? Free time, yeah, because you're not hosting the show. What are you going to, what are you, are you sailing? Are you oh, yes. gambling or, or <laughs> picking up smoking? Or no, we're very busy. We yeah. just, we just uh, received a, a five-year project with um, New Horizons program, which is part of a Pan-Canadian um, <clears throat> funding out of the federal government for five years, working with Dale, as a matter of fact, uh, hmm. uh, and working with North Bay and Sudbury on bringing uh, LGBTQ, 2S LGBTQ uh, for seniors. So that's a big, big project. So that's going to take a, and, you know, uh, I bought into a family cottage with six cousins. Mm -hmm. So I'm off there next week. We're building a, 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 a huge garage. So uh, I have to help with that, not build, but just look and go, oh, yes, more wine. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and uh, I'm joining the board of the Legal Clinic of Ontario. Um, you know, and so, yeah, I have a lot of time. Yeah. And I have four grandsons yeah. that don't need me, but, you know, I force myself yeah. <laughs> for them to put up with me. So, yeah, yeah it's busy. It's busy. Yeah. And anyway, it's, it's time. You know, when, when, when you do a show and you put energy into it and then you feel, mm -hmm. oh, no, because it is time consuming every mm -hmm. week. Whether it's a half an hour or an hour, you still have to make sure. And when it was live, 
on in January the 15th and it's snowing and the blizzard out and you're going, <laughs> are they going to show up or not? Yeah. You know, yeah. You know so, it, and it is, it, and you want to make it interesting. And when it becomes not interesting, mm -hmm. then it, not that it wasn't, but it's when it becomes that uh, you have to look for someone and who can I get and you're calling people desperately. Right. You, you have to come on the show, I have nobody. Right. Uh, I so mean, that's how I ended up. I was on, I was on four minute. times. Yeah, so. I, yeah. I did have a show, uh, <laughs> I think it was last year or the year before, my opening show like this, and my guest called me like half an hour before. Sorry, I completely forgot about it, and I'm in Toronto, and I can't, I can't be there. I called Essen Mao. Essen! <laughs> get your makeup on, put on your wig, get over here quick. <laughs> and she and she did come. She was wow. here like within 25 minutes or so. So the show went on because it, it, the opening show, there's no rerun. Right, <laughs> right. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Yeah. yeah. At least when there's reruns that you can, you know, if, if the guest doesn't show up, yeah. you can always do a rerun. Yeah. So, but thank you. It's really, it's really been. I mean, I'm just so surprised to see it. I thought it was just going to be. Yeah. One on one. Yeah. And I was, I was saying to Randy, where's the hair and makeup people? <laughs> it's <laughs> seven o'clock. Where's your driver? Where's my driver? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Not even a driver. Yeah. And all these red trucks sitting in the parking lot. Had you lot. stayed for 10 years, you might have gotten makeup and a driver. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> you left a few months early. Yeah. Oh, cool. yeah. So we talk about what you're, you're yep. doing next, which is fabulous. We've talked about your guests here and their experiences on your show. Mm -hmm. But I want to hear from you of the almost 10 years that you were doing the show. What was your, what was your favorite experience, your favorite guest? <sighs> what, what really stands out as, uh, as sort of the, uh, the penultimate moment for With Jerry? I don't, they were all, all the guests were great guests, really. Okay, but there I, has to be somebody that's answer. really... Right, I was going to say, yeah. as we're all sitting here. Yeah. <laughs> as we're all sitting excluding, here. The, excluding the folks in this right. room. Oh, of course right. it was Chris. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what was happening. <laughs> um, they were all memorable, actually, really. There was no... There was, there was no... There were funny moments more than there were memorable, memorable, memorable moments more than interesting guests, because all the guests I tried to... But there was one guest that came on, and he was a kitchen designer, and Kent, it was it was live, and I Kent fell asleep, <clears throat> and I could hear him snoring, <laughs> and the guys sitting here, and we're talking, and I'm hearing, it. <laughs> I'm going, oh, no, <laughs> you know, <laughs> things like that happened. Right. Uh, memorable guests. Ooh. I guess one of the segments that was really memorable was Madame Outrageous, a drag queen from Collingwood. She came on the show one week with a beard business attire, suit, tie, and everything. And then the following week, she came on in drag. She shaved the beard, had a wig that she had in Toronto Pride back in the 70s. Wow. And she phoned me up and she said, I need a dozen red roses, champagne, flute glasses. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm not going to do it. And I thought, oh. So we had a bottle of um, champagne, but it was um, non-alcohol. Uh, we had a dozen red roses, and she came on, and she had her partner at the time, who had white gloves and a tuxedo, drape on a chair the a silver sequin coat that um, Craig Russell oh, wow. had. I couldn't even touch it. I wanted to wear it. Don't touch the coat! <laughs> and there it sat like an effigy of, uh, of Craig Russell. And that was interesting because it was a total surprise to everybody because she came on, and she didn't look at all like the week before. Right. Wow. Because I had said, oh, and next week I'm having Madame Outrageous. I hope you can watch the show. Meanwhile, I'm talking to Madame Outrageous. So that was, that was probably cool. only because of the way the juxtaposition of the two shows made it really interesting. That's but everybody awesome. that comes on, it's, they're interesting. Why would you have a boring guest? Mm -hmm. yeah. Sometimes you can't tell, though. Yeah, yeah, sometimes you can. <laughs> well, I it's know. like a date. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't even know you when I said that. I was back in the mind, you're going, yeah. why is this so boring? Yeah, I know. <laughs> no, I'm sure that's a challenge. I, I know I'm already finding that a challenge, and that's why I've, I've reached out to the public for ideas on, on stories and shows that, that folks in the community want to see, because that sort of gives me an idea, okay, maybe I should talk to so-and-so. And, -so and, uh, and, and you're mentored, right? I mean, like Deanne McCollum was one of my mentors. Uh, over the years, and uh, because I'm not trained professionally to do television, I mean, I've never did television until I did Rogers, you know, and then being a host, I remember I had two guests on, two nurses, and I would just put the question out, and so what do you think about safer sex, or what do you think about condoms, but it, I never directed it to anyone, so one of the guests kept jumping, kept answering the question, and the other nurses sat there going, and then after the show, she said to me, I almost walked off, because 
And I didn't know if you're going to talk to a guest, you say, oh, so Morgan, what mm -hmm. do you think? Right. Mm -hmm. Rather than just put it out there and there's four of us sitting and we're all, okay, I'll answer it. <laughs> you, know, so yeah, you get yeah, one yeah. dominant personality and this is what happened. So you learn through experience, you know, that you don't do that. Absolutely. As, as you may, you may, you probably have more experience than you because you've been speaking all over the place. But, and you always have to think, right, ahead of time. Right, mm -hmm. right. Well, I mean, you were my first TV show <laughs> appearance. <laughs> Clarify. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, for for the four of you as previous guests on, on with Jerry, I want to hear from each of you, and we'll start with you, Morgan. Mm. What what do you want to see from Let's Be Perfect, Perfectly Queer? I was actually going to ask. I was going to ask you that question. So what? What but is? It's my show, so I'm asking. No. So <laughs> 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 yeah. You know what? I I I think that um, having interesting LGBTQ folks on and talk about what they're doing at the crux of it is is the most important part because I think human interest stories are genuinely very interesting to people. So I think seeing more of that, you know, what are some of the people in the community doing right. and what are the Im what's the impact that they're having in the community? So hoping to see, you know, a little bit more of that. And, and, and you've done a lot of it and, and I assume that you'll probably continue on Absolutely. Um, to, to continue to do that. But I think, you know, we've chatted and you'd mentioned that you're planning on getting out and about uh, a little bit, which I think is, is neat. Um, and I think that that'll be that'll be really good too. But uh, yeah, I think I think the human interest piece is something that hopefully uh, you know doesn't get lost uh, in it all. Oh, absolutely not. Absolutely and I'll come not. back on. And Allie, and talk. Well, I know we've had these conversations already, but my friend told me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, but I I am excited for that segment. I think that it'll be really cool to see what kind of questions people mm -hmm. bring forward, whether it be about like dating, relationships, or sexual health. It's that thin layer of being anonymous while asking that question. Very thin. I'm stress stressing that it's thin. Um, of asking those questions can be a lot of fun and can provide some really good answers. And I, I mean, especially around like sexual health and consent and relationships, those questions can be really informative and hilarious. Yeah, I agree. Right? <laughs> No, I, I think it's. I thank you for the idea. I think it's fabulous, and I know the uh, the graphic that we're coming up with to uh, introduce that segment is going to be pretty cool as well. So. I just came here to say that my idea is great. Uh, so. yeah, 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 yeah. That's the only reason why I invited you on the show. Perfect. <laughs> How are people going to ask? Is it through like email or is it through like a call-in thing? And are you? <sighs> It'll be it'll be, be determined. Okay. Yeah, it'll be a number of different ways. We'll yeah. do some on the street, like on the spot stuff. Yeah. Uh, some of it will come through um, through social media channels. Where okay. I'll be, right. I'll be asking folks to submit questions for asking for a friend. Yeah. So yeah, it'll be yeah. it'll take on a few different uh, variations as uh, as the show progresses That's and fun. matures. We're getting close on time here. So yeah. Dale, what about yourself? Yeah, I'll answer quickly. In fact, uh, Morgan, you brought it up when uh, the phone in. I remember Jerry when it used to be taped live. We used to encourage people to call into the show mm -hmm. to ask questions and you'd hear their voice coming through. And I know that's difficult to facilitate, but with the age of social media and, and uh, hashtags and et cetera, I think that there would be interesting ways to allow people to ask mm -hmm. and to uh, ask for a friend and send in a tweet or whatever that may be mm -hmm. and get user voices in onto the show, even if they can't necessarily call in, but they can still engage. Perhaps there can be something on the screen, it could make the post, yeah. and I think that would be a great way to bring the community into the show, even if they can't be at the studio. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, for sure. What the Chris? <laughs> <laughs> I, I like the idea. I mean, obviously, um, you know, profiling people in the community, but maybe maybe zooming out a bit and what's going on internationally um, with with LGBTQ uh, issues, and um, and maybe some fluff, some fun stuff, like some silly stuff that just you know, um, a couple of outrageous guests. You never had outrageous guests on, but. I had mad about mad about outrageous. <laughs> she was pretty outrageous. No, yeah. Facetious. And what about yourself, Jerry? What uh, what would you like to see? Let's be perfectly queer. Look like. I, I think this is a good start. Having me on every show. We did talk about doing the co-host thing, didn't we? We did. We did. We did. No, you know what? What's good about it is is that you can see something new, fresh. Somebody new brings new ideas, new freshness, which you're doing, which I didn't do. And uh, not to say that one is better than the other, but I think a fresh approach, because television to engage people has to be fresh, change, show some interesting. Right. And I think for you to come on and do something completely different in terms of how you frame it and how you title the show, 
brings a freshness to it that will encourage people to watch and, and, and see that the community isn't stagnant and there is new ideas coming out and then you may have similar guests and you may have other guests. Right. Yeah, and that's why I thought it was important that we, we branch out from just in-studio segments. So we will be doing, um, I'm, I'm touring the entire month of October across the country touring. in the Slay Stigma yeah. Tour promoting U equals U and right. yeah. dismantling stigma around folks who uh, are living with HIV. So there'll be a lot of uh, tape yeah. segments yeah. that will be. Wow. Yeah. Touring, touring, eh? Yeah. Touring. So, oh, oh yeah, so that's, that's part of my job. Oh, yeah. Your job. Apparently, <laughs> his, <laughs> the show's <laughs> budget is a lot bigger than <laughs> when it was with Jerry. Can you imagine, yeah. can you imagine the rider he's going to have at the, you know, the champagne? Oh, yeah. yeah. You know. oh, I'm going to drag queen for 30 days. I am going to be a diva by the time I get back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Guaranteed. Yeah. But we do, have a stop. we do have a stop here in Barrie that I want to make sure all of our, uh, our viewers are aware of. So on October 16th, uh, Trinity K. Bonet from season six of RuPaul's Drag Race, the first RuPaul's Drag Race, Race queen, that's a lot to that's say, a lot, yeah. <laughs> to uh, make an appearance here in Barrie, which I think is huge in and of itself, will be at the Georgian Theater on the evening of uh, October 16th. The tickets are free. All you have to do is go on to uh, the website positivity.ca, P-O-Z, Itivity.ca, sign the pledge against uh, HIV stigma, and you'll receive two free tickets to the show. We've got uh, not only Trinity um, performing, but some local queens as well. Justine Diaz has uh, confirmed mm -hmm. an appearance on the show. Uh, Anya Dreams will be joining us as well. We're still working on a few other logistics and, and local talent to be on the show, but uh, P-Flag's choir will, uh, will be performing wow. at, uh, at the show as well. So it's gonna be a, a great way to have some fun. There'll be a segment of the show where Trinity and I will do a, a back and forth and a question and answer, and uh, hopefully take some questions from the audience as well around uh, HIV and stigma. And it's a chance to entertain, as you mentioned, a little bit of fluff, but to also um, get some important information out to, uh, to folks as well. So that's what I'm hoping this entire show ends up being. So yeah, and who are you touring with again? Yeah, Trinity K. Bonet. Right. Oh, you are yeah. okay. from season yeah. six. Oh, he's not Paul's yeah. Drag Race. Yeah. What's that? He's not Trinity. And no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> That's the great reveal. <laughs> Surprise. Well, at some point along the tour, I will be hosting in drag, and oh, okay. we haven't decided which stop that will be at yet. Okay, whether it'll yeah. be just one or more than one, but yeah. there is a chance that perhaps my home stop will be yeah. the reveal of the what I look like in drag. Which and are you are you touring like on a bus? Like is it like like a rock? Well, we'll show be type we'll be thing? flying to some venues. We start in Yellowknife, <laughs> and we end in St. John's, Newfoundland. So <laughs> it's a white band. <laughs> but we have come, this, we have come to the end. Band. We have come to the end of my half hour, oh, and wow. uh, I want to say thank you to all of you for joining me on uh, this inaugural episode of Let's Be Perfectly Queer. But mostly, I want to thank you. Thank you. Yes. Because without the work that you've done over the last almost 10 years, mm. I wouldn't have this platform. Um, the work that you've done on, uh, on with Jerry has been the stumbling, uh, these stumbling blocks. The building blocks. <laughs> stumbling. Thank you. Have been the building blocks for yeah. this show and for opportunities right across uh, Simcoe County and I appreciate that and thank I appreciate you. you for all you've done. So. Thank you. And thank congratulations you, and all the best. Thank you very much sure. and thank all of you again. Thank, thank you. I really Thanks appreciate it. it. Yeah. Thanks very much for tuning in and uh, hope you will see us again next week. Mm -hmm.